Hello there YouTube, I am Necrostevo and it's time for week 8 in the Global Battle Association. This battle is actually going up on time and I could not be more overjoyed about it. Um, big shout outs to Blue Rogue for recording this week for me. Thank you very much for helping me out with that sir. This week we are having our rematch against the Tampa Bay Lux Rays who are coached by Monatui. Um, you should already know about him because I've battled him several times before, but if not, information in the description. We're going to do a quick team overview, and then we'll hop right into the battle. If you don't want to see the minute-long overview, you'll see a little note in the description for when the battle starts. Of course, for this battle, I have a Life Orb Stotland. You can see I kind of have a dual Sand Rusher core here. I kind of changed up my strategy from the first time because I thought I could overwhelm him with offense especially based on what he brought to the previous battle. Um, so I have uh, Offense of Stotland with a Life Orb, Lycanium Z, uh, Drill Rush, Zen Headbutt um, on uh, my Lycanroc. I had a very, I had a much more physically offensive um, Tyranitar this time, not nearly as bulky as the last one that I had. Uh, and this time I didn't carry um, Last time I had Taunt as an option in Low Kick, but I figured he would remember to put Light Metal on his Registeel, so I went with Crunch and Earthquake instead, alongside my Stealth Rocks. Uh, this Rotom is also much more offensively oriented. I actually had Hidden Power Ice on it this time too, just in case it went up against his Glass Score. And then um, a sub three attacks uh, Mega Alkazam with Focus Blast, Signal Beam, and Psychic. I really had to put Focus Blast on there because that was my only way of, of hitting Registeel at all if it came in on my Alakazam. Uh, I really didn't want to run that move, but if you gotta run it, you gotta click it. Now you can see that Monotui brought Rotom Cut, which I was very suspicious of it being his Z user. His two Z users are Rotom Cut and Slowking. With this team structure, I was really expecting it to be Grassium or Electrium Z. He has Registeel once again alongside the Gliscor, the Keldeo, and the Weavile once again. No Charizard X, which is kind of cool, just to not have to deal with that because his I didn't bring Togekiss, so if he had brought it and just like spam Outrage or Dragon Claw, that could have been annoying. Um, but a Cell Rock kind of checks that too, so I completely understand not bringing it. Uh, he does start off with his Rotom cut form, and I was really worried about him clicking Z move right away. And so my best swap into that is going to be my own Rotom. I did start off with Tyranitar because if he led with anything else, I could get up my Stealth Rocks immediately. Um, I would have been okay to click Stealth Rocks right here, actually just because he Volt Switches out. Um, it would have been a very risky move in order to do that. And I really wanted to keep Tyranitar around. So it was really no risk on his part to go for Volt Switch. Uh, he does bring in Caldeo immediately and there wasn't even that much time like that elapsed on the game. So I figured he might have Scarf Keldeo again. Last time he had Scarf Modest, maybe he put more speed on there this time, or maybe less speed, I don't know. But my best switch into that is my Araquanid. He doubles back to Rotom Cut because he wants to continue this momentum of Volt Switching around. This time I just stayed in because I was like, if he's gonna Volt Switch, I'm going to be able to take that, get my Citrus Berry here, uh, last time my Araquanid ended up going against his Keldeo and that worked out because he kept missing Hydro Pumps. Here I went for Leech Life expecting him to just stay in and maybe Thunderbolt. I really could have gone for uh, Toxic there which would have been very nice to, to put a timer on the Keldeo. Um, he did kind of throw me off since he was using the, the normal form of Keldeo, not Resolute. I actually thought he didn't have Secret Sword at the beginning of the battle. And I thought he would have had uh, like a Swords Dance physical type Keldeo, but he does have Secret Sword. I was not aware you could have Secret Sword on non-resolute Keldeo, that's kind of cool. Um, anyways though, uh, we do get a chance to drop the Toxic on the Keldeo, which is perfect because I really need Keldeo whittled down in order for uh, other things to sweep, especially if he is Scarf like I suspect that he is. 
He goes back out into his Rotom. It would have been really nice there to drop a double Toxic, but that's okay. We actually both ended up switching at the same time. I went to Alakazam that time expecting him to just continue to go for Secret Sword. Uh, I am going to go back out into my Rotom here because I didn't, I was like, if he happens to be bluffing Scarf, I could lose my Alakazam here if he like goes for a Leaf Storm or something like that because I didn't want to Mega Evolve that early because I didn't want to take Sandstorm damage. Uh, so I go back out to my Rotom again, knowing that the Leftovers is going to mitigate some of this chip damage, especially since Sandstorm will be going down in a few turns. And the Keldeo is down to half of its HPs without me even attacking it. I mean, he got hit by a Leech Life, but that's pretty good overall. Uh, he does go for Scald on this swap in here, but it does a little bit too much damage for me to take another one, especially after Sandstorm, which is unfortunate. I was hoping I could take, uh, you know, take less damage and force him to take more toxic damage. But it is nice that I managed to live one more Scald just because it, that's an extra turn of toxic damage. But uh, I think Arachnid did really well here in putting this Keldeo at such a low amount of HP. And the Sandstorm is down. And so that means, okay, great. When I reset it on the next time, I will be able to kind of do a little bit more with it. I do drop in Alakazam here. I was tempted to go out into Lycanroc and, you know, pick it off from there with an Acel Rock, but I didn't want to risk him being Aqua Jet or just like, Monotui is the one who would run that type of set and just completely take me by surprise. I knew if he was locked into Scald, I could get off a substitute and he would go down to the poison and I would have my substitute in for whatever he went into next. So that's what my thinking was there. He does go into Registeel and I was like, excellent. This is why I brought Focus Blast. Remember last time I forgot Focus Blast when I went up against him. Um, and that does plenty of damage because I am a modest um, Alakazam. Now on the downside, he is carrying Protect. And I learned my lesson after the last battle where I, after just like clicking a move a few times, I was running out of PP. So I did PP max this Alakazam's Focus Blast, so I have eight to spare here. So we're down to seven, He after he burns another one here, now we're down to six. I am running Modest, so he still is within range of getting dropped by a Focus Blast. Um, so I was figuring he would switch out but I wasn't sure what he would swap into, and I was really close to clicking Signal Beam, but I just ended up going for Focus Blast again, just because I was like, okay, I don't want to overpredict and go for Signal Beam on the Registeel and have him get up rocks or just KO me outright or something like that. Um, I am going to stay in here and click Signal Beam because number one, I, I knew I would have the chance of Confusion, and similarly to Keldeo, I just need damage on Slowking. Um, I need to force it to swap out a lot in order to get that Regenerator, or I just need to KO it where I can. Um, so I do get the confusion, he doesn't hit himself. That does kind of um, make him more wary, I think, to stay in an attack, I think, if he's confused. Uh, Alakazam, I, did, I feel like I did a little bit better with it this time, as opposed to the previous times I've used it. it it's just not, it doesn't take hits at all because it's an Alakazam and it's like I keep putting it in positions where it has to take a hit. So I'm just, I'm slowly starting to understand Alakazam. Now here I just went for Crunch immediately. I wish I had Pursuit in this battle because I could have stopped the Slow King right there. Um, but I did go for Crunch, hit the Rotom on the way in, and he finally reveals the Grassium Z for his Leaf Storm. And, uh, man, I really, I don't know if it was the right move here to let Tyranitar go down. But I also didn't have a good switch into Bloom Doom, Z Bloom Doom. Um, so I, I guess I'd be interested to hear other viewpoints on that. My thinking was if I let Tyranitar go down right there, now I have all these sandstorms with which my two sand rushers can utilize. Mainly Stoutland because Lycanroc is fast enough to where it doesn't necessarily need the sand for the Pokemon that he has remaining. Uh, I am Life Orb, so that means I can swap up my moves, which is great. And this is Stoutland, so it can definitely take an Earthquake from the likes of Gliscor as well. So he does come in with Gliscor, live the Ice Fang on about 20%, and then he goes for Earthquake, putting me right around 35% or so. Uh, but that means I still have 
several attacks that I can utilize here. We are going to be able to take down the Gliscor as well. And after the Life Orb hit, I have two more attacks that I can use. Now he goes out to his Weavile and I know he's going to be going for Ice Shard here, Ice Shard or Fake Out, um, because he can't really play around with guessing and then get his Weavile knocked out for no reason. So I go hard switch into Lycanroc because I still will have one turn of sand left. And then with that, I will outspeed the Weavile with my own priority. Now, unfortunately, without Stealth Rocks up, he's not in range of my Assault Rock. So I decided to click my Z move just because if he switched out to the Registeel, I would have a chance to KO it with the Drill Run. And of course, that Z move is the Splinter Storm Shards. We haven't used this in a little while, but you know what to expect when I use this move. That's right. It's Smooth Rock, the music that makes the moment count. Presenting Smooth Rock Storm Shards, the most perfect 32-track collection on these two incredible CDs. You can't get these Storm Shards in any store. These are your all-time favorites from the biggest rocks ever dropped on a metal golem. Kick back and relax with the best. Equip a Smooth Rock now. Sand Rush Delivery, available for $2.99. Not available where Smogon's banned. And so, on this next move, I thought for a long time, is he going to use Protect to burn my last Sand Turn, get more leftovers, and just waste, you know, my, my resources here. And I was very sure that he was going to go for Protect, so I swapped into Stoutland in order to take out the Registeel, number one, and also be able to, at the very least, pressure him to go into Weavile, because then I could go out into my Rotom or something else. Like my Stalin was on such low HP, it wouldn't be able to take an Ice Shard from Weavile, but I should definitely be able to take another Ice Shard from it with my Lycanroc. So my thinking was he was gonna go for Protect, I could get Stalin in and pick up a kill with Stalin, and then have him go out into Weavile, and then from there I could go out into my own uh, Rotom, which would save, again, one final attack with my Stotland. Uh, Rotom can take at least a knockoff from Weavile, and then from there I could finish it off with my Lycanroc, and he would only have uh, the Slowking left, and Slowking can't take a hit from both Lycanroc and my Stotland. That's what my thinking was, but he just KO'd my Stotland with Seismic Toss, so none of that happened. Uh, we had a few back and forth turns there with Stone Edge and Slack Off, which didn't end up mattering too much because I didn't get a crit or anything game altering. Um, I do bring in my Rotom here, and I just I, I'm kind of at a at a loss at this point because I'm out of Pokemon, but I do know because of the weird investment I have on my Rotom, I can live a knockoff. So if he swaps out to Weavile like he does, maybe I can lower the differential just a little bit more. He does go out into Weavile, and I am forced to go for my Overheat if I want this lower differential here. I could have tried for like a Volt Switch crit or something weird like that, but we're just going to go straight for it and then try for the crit on Slowking, I guess was the best thing I could have done there. But now when he brings back in Slowking from the Regenerator, it's going to be at near max HP. And so I would need like a Thunderbolt crit, not even a Volt Switch crit. And I don't even know if a Thunderbolt crit would do it. But that's going to be the end of the battle, and because of that misplay, mis that I don't know, I'm going to call it a misplay. The misplay was Slow King. I end up losing 0 and 1 to Monotui once again. Uh, but that was a really fun match. Um, I really feel like I I played with the team better in this respect, bringing it a little bit more in an offensive type manner. Uh, things coming down to that one turn with Stoutland kind of middling to really argue that because you could also argue oh well he would there's no way he would ever go for protect because he'd be worried that you swords dance so I can totally understand both viewpoints there but thank you all for watching um, thank you again Blue Rogue for recording for me uh, thank you Monatui for the battle this will be the last time that I battle you for this season, so hopefully I get to battle you again next season or in another league or something like that. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.